What is institutional racism in Detroit today in regards to food justice? Institutional racism refers to how a structure is in place that maintains a certain power relationship. And that power relationship defines what kind of decisions are made and who benefits from those decisions. And in Detroit, as far as our food system is concerned, there has been a tendency for food and uh, the uh, access to food to not really represent the needs of the people. In Detroit, the average consumer feels that they have to purchase healthy food outside of the city. Even markets that are a reasonable distance of most homes, the quality and selection of healthy food items are exceedingly lacking. Most available foods are canned, boxed, frozen, or highly processed. And these highly processed foods are nutrient poor with excessive salt, sugar, additives, and harmful fats. The truth is, fresh, additive-free, high-quality, real food is almost non-existent. Yes, there's a total problem with fresh anything in this right? Organic, you can basically forget about it. Um, but at the same time, if we don't demand it, um, if our standards are low, and we keep on accepting what is given to us, then my life, my life, no, it ain't picture perfect. Basically, you have to have the dialogue and the conversations and being that model of what it is that you're uh, wanting to represent. I mean, we have to be those things. Uh, my relation to food is that it's the first thing on my mind when I wake up on, in the morning is what I'm going to have for breakfast. Um, and so I think that there's a deep physical connection to food that it's something that I require to live by. Um, but I think there's also a deep historical connection to food of that, of that it's a part of who um, I am as a person and it's a part of almost who all of us are. We are inherently an agrarian people from the land. And Do you know what the food system is? In terms of like, um, what eats what? <laughs> uh, no, uh, more like uh, how your food comes to you. Uh, I'm not oblivious to the fact of where food comes from, but I don't know exactly all the steps. I don't know if I do know what a food system is. I think it's a really, you know, I think that a lot, we talk a lot about this concept um, of what a food system is, but I don't know if I know what a food system really is. I mean, for one thing, that's just sort of an academic term and, you know, sort of an abstract idea. You know, how many of us think about when we're hungry about the food system? Most of us think about the food system is my refrigerator and my mouth. I used to be in the bar restaurant industry since I was like 18, mm -hmm. so I would eat whatever I wanted to eat pretty much, didn't really think about the consequences, and drink whatever I wanted to drink, um, and definitely caught up with me, so I now eat live and not live to eat. Mmm, no, 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 you eat to live. Um, my introduction was through, uh, what's that? sweetener in the yellow package. I had a reaction to Splenda on my way to trying to lose some weight. I lost the weight, but I, I lost some other stuff in the process. I had a reaction, and I, I talked to a, a healthcare professional, and I asked him <clears throat> what could be going on, and he, he asked me, have you introduced anything to your diet? And I thought, in the last few weeks, I've been taking Splenda for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and within 20 minutes of consumption of the Splenda, I got these highs and these aches and my vision and my heart. If most people pay attention to what their body is telling them and just respond in a loving way, you'll find out a whole lot of things and then just starting to read the labels, um, looking at the food. So if we think about 
the black community and you know our understanding of racism, our understanding of classism, we're really quick to be able to sort of give some examples. And given the nature of our oppression, we often turn to food as a comfort. So even families that don't have a lot of money, you know for those holidays, it's gonna be a spread. And it may set back folks back a couple weeks to provide that food, but then food is the place of comfort. And that food is often unhealthy. And so if we're having a difficult time getting folks to sort of understand food oppression, part of the reason is because food has become sort of an opiate. It's sort of an intoxicant. It's sort of a way to say, yeah, the other 364 days of the year are rough, but we know we're going to have a spread on Thanksgiving and Christmas. So in helping people understand food as oppressor or the kinds of access to food that we have as oppressive, it's also important that we educate our people on how food is liberatory. I would say food justice would be that every person has the skills to either grow, cook, um, gather, whether it be in shopping in a local store or shopping at a market or um, um, through trade with friends and neighbors, um, food that they like, that is healthy, um, that they're proud of, um, and that brings them satisfaction, uh, and that everybody has the opportunity for that, um, no matter what. I'm a, I'm a grandmother, and I reflect on the past, but I think about the future, and I think about my grandchildren, and I think about the system that failed me. And I hope this is a, a continuation or evolution of a process that is beginning where folks think in terms of self-determination, self-reliance. I mean, I just hope that the work that we're doing as urban agriculture, uh, uh, growing food in a city, is that it's a, a model for what is to happen in our future. I worry about my grandchildren. I go to the grocery store and I worry what in the world are they gonna spend for food 15, five years from now, for real, you know. I mean, how are they going to exist in a world that is not making room for them? They have to make room for themselves. They have to. So, I mean, we cannot look at this as just a thing that we do. This is a preparation. This is a preparation for life, for real, for real. Um, growing food for me is not about anything other than being sustainable. Based on empirical evidence, that this food system is designed for a very specific purpose and in that it is executing flawlessly like it's perfect in its execution of its design. Uh, to that point, leave that machine alone which is designed for what it's doing and we continue to focus our attention on creating something that does work. There are some lessons uh, definite lessons on distribution that can be learned from the food system as a model. Uh, we take whatever's valuable and whatever's useful from that old, from the established food system model and work as we work to create our own alternative. And it starts local. Simple things like promoting uh, urban gardens simple things like promoting urban gardens all the way to a uh, urban farm that can source a local bakery or a local deli like those are all things that are very substantial and very real steps towards creating our own food system but the answer is creating our own that works for us for the greatest good possible and uh, less trying to put band-aids or rehab mm. Less looking at something as broken that is actually perfectly well, like the boy works, you know what I mean? And it's doing what it's supposed to do, which is create an uh, inequality and an imbalance where it sees fit. So to that point, leave that boy alone and mm. let us focus all of our energy and attention on something that works by design, for us by design.
be growing up. We be growing organic activists, no propaganda and no preservatives. We grow with the weeds and cabbages. We taking out the neo conservatives. Yo yo, we grow us healing like chamomile and nettles because we keep cool like the handle on the kettle when the soup's hot. A dew drop evaporate and cools off and falls off the corn stalk. The drop that the roots caught. We live in days of new talk and propaganda. I ain't a Pollyanna, but I kick the proper grammar. We know the field planets are sprayed by Tropicana and get visas denied with no reason for why. How many people must die for this piece of the pie? We be growing We be growing organic activists No propaganda and no preservatives We grow with the weeds and cabbages We taking out the neo-conservatives Our food is dressed up like a new student on his freshman night Looking fresh and fly to the naked eye